So you spoke a little bit about um, how one can lock a price in by buying off plan because they buy at a certain time. And by the time they move in, the, their property has already even increased in value. So I want to just know, in your experience and in your opinion, do you think that this way of acquiring property um, is, is more lucrative or, or it's a good investment or a good way of increasing one's investments? Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page at 7 p.m. And it's a weekday where we talk everything and anything property. So we're talking buying, selling, investing. We're talking about how you can grow your property portfolio and, oh, and grow it from strength to strength by using information that you get from our podcast. Thank you so much if you are joining us for the first time. And for everybody else who's joining us on the Twitter spaces, thank you so much for coming through. Hopefully you stay to the end of the conversation. Tonight we are talking about something that if you are a prospective buyer and you want to go into um, buying property or you are a property investor, this can benefit you. So send this link to anyone who you think might just benefit from listening to the conversation tonight and we are surely going to have a good time. Tonight I'm joined by the area principal of Pam Golding, um, Gareth Bailey, who's going to be talking to us about is buying off plan a good investment. Gareth, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to me thanks for having me on the podcast it's an absolute pleasure so we are talking buying stuff off plan well buying <laughs> property off plan someone might not know what we mean when we say we are buying an off plan can you just take us through what the concept is and um, how it came about and how even um, you guys use it in the property industry um, to make sure that uh, you drive sales and you allow people to get or uh, give people an opportunity to get those properties Okay, so off plan basically refers to the fact that um, you are unable to see the property that you're buying. So um, because it hasn't been built yet. So you have to look at the plans and all the diagrams, um, like the floor plans and the unit layouts and the pretty art, um, artist impressions to make a decision. So you're basically buying off plan, so to speak. And um, yeah, that's where the term comes in. Sure. You know, it's, so you would say it's like buying online for property. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult because um, most people like to see exactly what they're buying, walk around, kind of oh. touch the walls, um, yes. see and feel the place. And that's not always possible. So you've got to you really use your imagination at times. Mm. Um, so good developers and uh, marketing agencies help buyers to to feel comfortable um, by providing good quality artist uh, impressions and as much detail as possible. Definitely. Um, you, you already said that it, it's something that's quite difficult. And maybe when you guys are selling properties or developments, this is one of the challenges that you get. Um, let's talk about what the advantages for a buyer when they are buying a property using this uh, method. What are those advantages that they can outright say, this is uh, an advantage for me to buy uh, using this way? Okay, so in terms of um, good property growth, which you know it varies over time, um, some time ago, we had annual growth rates of 30%. At the moment, we probably got 5% national um, average in terms of you know, property prices are going up 5% a year. Um, but one of the benefits of buying off plan is that you put down a relatively small deposit today of, say, 10% and secure the property at today's prices even though the property is only going to be complete in 18 months time. So you put down your 10% and you enjoy the growth of that property and price over the following 18 months. So from that point of view, um, it can be a good investment. Then um, another uh, positive about buying off plan is that often new developments offer access to new areas that weren't available before. 
So um, new suburbs open up. Um, it's literally like the light is turned on uh, on a section of the map that wasn't there before. You can now buy property in this new area. And that's one of the um, benefits of buying off plan. You get access to these new areas and you also get access to um, new types of properties. So for example, maybe typically there were only freestanding homes in an area and mm -hmm. new development brings uh, an estate concept or it brings an apartment um, concept. So you have access to new types of properties in an area or completely new areas um, with new views and new outlooks. So often buying off plan gives you access to new and cool things that um, weren't available before. And sure. then I've got one or two others here too, like um, when you buy off plan, obviously there's less maintenance because you're buying a new product um, that comes with guarantees from the developer. So it's unlikely that you are going to have to, for example, repair a leaking roof anytime soon. Um, uh, whereas when you buy an existing property, you buy it foots toots. You know, if within the first week of moving in, it rains hard and your roof leaks, that's your problem. And, and you've, you may have to dig deep to get that fixed. So you know, another benefit of buying off plan is that you get a new property and there are developer guarantees. Um, there's also a snag period. So when you mm -hmm. take occupation of your property 18 months down the line, you usually have a week or two to identify any issues that you find with the property and um, submit a report to the developer saying, these are the issues that I've noticed. The shower door doesn't close properly. It's not closing flush. Um, the hot tap is not working or whatever. Mm. It may be. Um, and the developer would uh, remediate those issues um, within a pretty short period of time. And then finally, um, one of the benefits is that you don't pay transfer duty. So when you buy um, a property, usually you've got to pay for the property, plus you've got to pay for the transfer duty um, on the property on about a two and a half million rand property. I think it's about 90,000 rand on, yeah. as you go up, um, it, it escalates. I think it's about 250,000 rand on 4 million, um, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas when you're buying off plan, there's no transfer duty that you have to pay because it already includes VAT. Um, yeah, so, and one of the benefits of the fact that it includes VAT is that the bank is prepared to give you a loan on the full amount, including VAT. Um, whereas mm -hmm. if you were buying off plan, uh, sorry, if you were buying an existing property and you had to pay transfer duty, the bank only um, will consider financing you on the portion excluding the transfer duty. So yeah. there's a subtle difference there where effectively the bank is prepared to finance the portion, including your uh, VAT or transfer duty on the new development, whereas with existing properties, uh, you don't get that benefit. So you spoke a little bit about um, how one can lock a price in by buying off plan because they buy at a certain time. And by the time they move in, the, their property has already even increased in value. So I want to just know, in your experience and in your opinion, do you think that this way of acquiring property um, is, is more lucrative or, or it's a good investment or a good way of increasing one's investments? Um, yeah, I think that it is. Um, you know, it depends what you ultimately want to do with your investment. If you're looking to try and just grow your assets um, um, and generate as much rental revenue as possible in the short term, then it's a better idea to buy as many smaller units as possible because um, you get a better rental yield on smaller units than you do on bigger units. But if you are buying a property as an investment, but with the ultimate goal of maybe retiring on it yourself for the older folk, then maybe you would buy a bigger unit, even though it won't yield as good a return as um, buying more smaller units. So um, an example of that is if you were looking to spend 2 million Rand on an investment property off plan, you might choose to buy two of them at 1 million Rand. Um, and earn seven and a half thousand rental on each, which gives you 15,000 Rand in total, as opposed to buying one two million Rand unit and earning 
for example, 13,000 Rand a rental. So you can see that you get a better uh, rental return generally, um, rental yield on smaller or cheaper units. There's an inverse relationship between rental yield and the size of the property. Sure, no, definitely. Thank you so much. If um, you just joined us, we are talking buying off plan. If this is a good investment opportunity for you as a property investor, or if this is a way that you can break into the property market if you are a first time buyer, we are joined by Gareth Bailey, who's the area principal uh, at Pam Golding. So we, we've been talking about this and I really think that if, if, you, if you are looking at going into um, the, the property market, especially as a first time buyer, this really does sound like something Thing that you would want to really look into and make sure that you have that information about it to ensure that you are you are making the right decision so let's go into the poll of the day thank you so much for everyone who is also who is watching and engaging with us on on the facebook stream thank you so much we really really appreciate it um the question on the poll was what is your favorite room in the house since we're talking house plans today, this was this question is really fitting. So uh, the first uh, first option was my bedroom, second was the kitchen um, or the lounge, and um, the first person who answered who was Matsepiso Musebi says most definitely my kitchen, um, and Kaisa said I only love my bed, <laughs> and my mama I'm sorry. <laughs> So clearly, um, pe uh, people love different parts of their houses, and that is that is that is also very important. And I want I want to bring this uh, bring you in here, Gareth, and ask uh, what have you guys seen when people are coming to buy uh, homes of plan? What are their priorities? What are the things that they are saying? This for me is a given. I I this is what I want to see. If I'm not seeing this, then I'm probably not going to be convinced to buy. Okay, so. I think that um, what people generally look for is um, what, how many bedrooms they are getting for the price. So if you think about when you're young, maybe you um, um, you see on these these um, American movies about them trading baseball cards when they're young, and each player has different characteristics. Um, you. We always talk about um, maximizing the number of bedrooms and bathrooms at each price point. So you want to um, have the best possible stats at every price point. And I think that's probably the most important thing that people look for. Um, obviously, there's a trade-off between um, um, kind of uh, having a higher, a bigger property at a higher price versus having um, extreme value at a lower price. But generally speaking, people buying off-plan apartments are very interested in um, seeing, uh, you know, uh, trying to get it at the lowest possible price for the number of bedrooms and bathrooms that are available. And then other than that, um, I would say that that comment about the kitchen is correct. The kitchen and um, living area being open plan, entertainment, um, access uh, the flow between indoors and outdoors. Uh, South Africans like to braai and like to um, be in, in the outdoors. So, um, you know, to the greatest extent possible, that's uh, something that's also valued. And then um, parkings is a big one. You know, uh, to sell a unit uh, without a parking is, is, is a tough one. And then to sell a two bedroom unit with one parking, is okay but it's nice to have the option for people to buy another parking um to sell a three bed with one parking would be um pretty difficult because if a family's living there and they have got more than one car um then that would be an issue so i think those are some of the things that people look at um off plan um, and then obviously the most uh, the most cliched one which is location you know choosing the apartment yeah. uh, or, or the development of plan that's in the best possible location, maybe because of transport routes or whether it's sea views, um, whatever that may be. Thank you so much for that. You know, um, with COVID-19 and the way things have changed and um, really 
us not being able to do um, business the same way that we used to, what other technological um, advancements that you guys have seen or that you guys have adopted in this space that allows you to continue to be able to sell these properties of plan and to give uh, people that same experience, you know, um, they were already going to be seeing maybe uh, a brochure or, or uh, a, uh, a file that has these different plans but now people are sitting in their houses and they can't really maybe even come to the to the office to come have this session with you or even go to the site so what are those um technological in, uh, advancements that you guys are using or apps that you are using to to show people and and maybe even augment how these these places are going to look and you know really simulate um how how the place looks Okay, I'd like to say that we have virtual reality and augment, augmented reality available to us already, but um, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have um, a couple of things that have come about as a result of COVID. Um, one of them is Matterport, which you may have seen, which is that kind of aerial view and you fly into the building or fly into the apartment from above mm -hmm. and um, you can navigate around the apartment or the property and go into each room and go out onto the balcony and, and look at the view. Um, so that's one of the technologies that's been used to, during COVID. But um, specifically in the development space, buying off plan, um, to give you an example, um, Pam Golding Properties has just launched York in Sanctuary Private Estate, um, which is an FWJK development in Amshlanga Ridgeside. And we have a web module that we've developed which shows the exterior of the building and you can move your cursor over the floors and choose a floor in the building. It'll then zoom into that floor and you can look at all the different types of apartments available on that floor. If you click on a specific apartment, it will show you the apartment's layout inside. And you can also click on a little camera icon to see what the view is like from that apartment, from the balcony. So, um, that is a tool that we are using um, to help our prospective buyers to feel, get a better feel for the property without having to come into our office or um, come on site. Uh, Thank you so much for that. Mm, thank you so much for that. It's it's really it's it's really great to see how we can now use technology to to simulate these things and and give people that that sense of urgency because at the end of the day it is an investment and I want to know that I'm making the right decision. And um, talking about um, the, it being an investment, how can one pivot their investment? Because we want to use this form of of buying property of acquiring property as an investment, you know, or, or to increase a property portfolio. How can one um, use this to pivot that that um, property portfolio? Okay, so uh, by pivot, are you meaning um, how to maximize your benefit? Yes. Um, from yeah, so I think that goes to the point I was um, talking about earlier which is, you know, if you purely looking at it from an investment and rental yield point of view, then um, it's often a better decision to buy um, smaller units, more smaller units than buy one slightly bigger unit because your rental yield is better and cumulatively you will be better off um, investing in that fashion. I think another thing to bear in mind is um, Often there's a bit of a glut of stock when a new development registers and it, it, um, um, the purchasers take occupation because suddenly you've got 100 or 150 um, new properties that are on the market and um, many of those owners may be looking to rent them out. Some of them may be looking to flip them and sell them and you don't want to be average. You don't want to be like all the rest of them. So you've got to try and bear that in mind at the outset and think to yourself, well, how do I differentiate my unit from the outset? Maybe you choose your location cleverly and you're on a corner um, that has um, a wider angle of views, or maybe you choose to spend a bit more money to invest in air conditioning, um, an air conditioning option in your unit. Um, so these are the sorts of things that you can do to help uh, differentiate yourself later if you want to sell or if you're looking for a tenant, because these small differences can help your, your unit seem um, better than, than the rest in the building. Definitely, definitely. And you know, it's that, it's that 
that little effort that you take as an investor, that that little um, thoughts that you put into your units that makes it a ten times better. And just already and already just mentioning that, um, I'm thinking of the value as well. And and I'd like to really now pose that question to say, um, will then it increase the value of the, of that particular property? Because I mean, if if these properties were all bought on plan and there are some um, minor renovations or minor additions that you put to yours, does this ultimately increase the value? value of the property that you bought off plan initially? <clears throat> yes, I think it will. Um, it, it will definitely because people perceive value in things that they mm. don't have to go and spend money on if they were to buy a property because it's already included. But um, also because it compares favorably with um, the other properties um, in the development. And it comes down to supply and demand. You know. Uh, if there's lots of supply, then um, uh, relative to demand, then price is not going to be strong. But if um, you manage to differentiate your units so that there's not many other units that are the same as yours, then you can demand a higher price and get a better return on your investment. So you want to be thinking upfront when you're buying, how can I buy a unit that is different to most of the others? How many of this type B2 are there in, in um, the development uh, in this position? Because I think it's really nice. Oh, there are only three out of 50. Okay, yeah, that, that bodes well for your ultimate return because you'll be able to differentiate um, based on that, as opposed to being one of 50 that are all the same and not differentiated in any way, then you're gonna be um, kind of in the same bag as everyone else. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the biggest question in any investor's mind now who watches our podcast regularly is what are the disadvantages? What are my risks? What should I look out for to make sure that if I'm going to invest in something like this, um, I'm guarded against those risks, I'm able to mitigate them. And if there are any disadvantages, I'm able to navigate them um, seamlessly. So please talk us through the advantages of acquiring properties of plan. Some of the 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 people who are watching and who are following on Instagram are mentioning some of the things that they have gone through and I'll I'll field them quickly, yeah. but um just give us those those ones that 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 you know in terms of the industry in terms of the the way things are set up what are the disadvantages that come with buying and an, a property off plan? Okay, so um I would say that the main risk and disadvantage of buying off plan is that um, your money gets tied up, you pay your deposit, um, perhaps you secure the balance of your purchase price, and then the development gets delayed for a year or two longer than it should have. Um, and you want to get out, but you can't because you're locked into the agreement and you have to wait out that period. So, you know, the way to deal with that risk is again, to make sure that you choose a developer that has a strong track record of um, delivering on time and to specification. And, um, you know, I, I, in fact, that's singularly the most important thing. If you choose your developer first and then look at the products that they've got available, that's almost more important than finding the lovely looking development and uh, then only considering the developer. Um, the developer comes first. And then the second thing is um, the price can be higher sometimes relative to what you can buy in the in the existing property market. And that's because um, construction costs and steel costs today are more expensive and it's more expensive to build a house today than it is to buy an existing one. So developers are under immense pressure to um, get all their construction input costs and develop the property and bring it to market at a price that uh, buyers are prepared to pay um, uh, today. So, so what, what you find is that the prices can be a bit higher than what you can get, but then you are getting a new property um, off plan. So it's higher price. Um, let's see what else there is. Um, Oh, yeah, you, you don't see what you're going to get. And that's a biggie for a lot of people. Uh, there's risk in standing there, trying to imagine, uh, one, what your property is going to look like inside. Two, um, when you walk out the door and onto the balcony, what is your view going to be like? Is, are you going to look straight into another unit? 
Um, are you going to have a view out over the city or out to sea um, or over the coastal forest? Um, these are the things that you've got to be careful of because um, if you buying and from a yeah if you if you not careful you can end up with uh, something that ultimately is not great and by that stage it's been transferred into your name. So if you choose a good developer, um, they often offer quite a high level of confidence that your um, about what your property is going to look like inside what your views are going to be like. Many developers will even give you an angle of view. So they may say you will have 75 degree sea views or 90 degree sea views from your balcony um, or 180 degrees or 270 degrees if you're on a corner unit. And it's quite nice to get that uh, material from them because um, if they put it in writing and give it to you, then um, they should deliver on that. Thank you so much for that. And it's very, very important that um, as an investor, you know, you look at those risks, look at those cons and um, see your risk appetite and see if you are willing to actually go into it. We, um, I want us to wrap up now because our time is well spent. And um, in, in us wrapping up, just give uh, um, overall advice to someone who wants to go into the market, someone who maybe wants to get more property. What are those things um, that you would, well, what is that advice you would give someone who wants to uh, get a property this way. Are you talking specifically off plan, or yes, just off plan specifically? Okay. Yes, off plan specifically. Um, I would. So, if you're just getting started, um, I think that you need to firstly um, spend less money um, so that you can save for your deposit. Remember that although you don't pay transfer duty, you're still going to have to pay transfer costs to the um, conveyancer who's going to register the property in your name. So you need to make provision for that. And um, I think just buy within your own means. Uh, I think a lot of young people who are starting out in property investment um, or buying their primary pro property even, uh, try and buy the biggest, fanciest property that they can afford. And that's not always the best strategy. Um, sometimes just tempering your expectations in the immediate term and buying something that you can afford, something that makes good financial sense, and then perhaps saving to buy another little unit that you can rent out um, is a good option. And, you know, down the line, you can always sell one or two of them and then invest in something a bit smarter. Um, but just to be prudent and um, take baby steps. And I think... Um, you'll be surprised how quickly that can roll up. Definitely, definitely too important to look out for. Thank you so much, Gareth, for joining us and really, really sharing those insights with us. We really, really appreciate it and have a good evening. You're welcome. Thank you to me. Thank you so much. We've reached the end of tonight's episode and we were talking about buying off plan and if this is a good investment and I think after that episode you will agree with me that it isn't it is a good option to 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 consider when you are looking to either increase your property portfolio or get into the market or even to really just start getting those properties thank you so much for joining us tonight and yes we are counting down to 500 episodes right here on the private property podcast so do ensure that you share the link with your friends your family make sure that when we are talking property they are here to hear what you are hearing thank you so much for joining us tonight and have a good evening <laughs>